grip ready and ho, oh, hello, and this is the proper way and the etiquette and to put your pinky up in the counting. And... <laughs> Chris, uh, it is serious, serious help, man. Well, you know, you gotta have fun in life. If you ain't enjoying life, what you doing? You know what? Let's go. Let's stay in that framework for a minute, Chris. But I know we aren't. I, that's what I was thinking about as I thought about you today. We are not born with a pleasant attitude. Napoleon Hill writes about having a pleasing attitude. Where do you get it from, Chris? Well, it just comes from experience in life. When you know and you figure out, you know, that you being mad or being upset or worried about stuff. And it's all this stuff. When you really sit back and look at it, you don't have control of it anyway. So why are you worried about something you have no control over? So say somebody do something stupid, like somebody say a bad driver and they cut you off. You can be mad and uh, uh, oh, you and cuss them out. But what is that really doing? You know what I mean? It's like a waste of brain power. And I have learned over time that we must control our emotions because if you let others control your emotions, you're in trouble. Oh, wow. When did you have this? I'm very interested in this, Chris. I know when I learned it, but I want to know when you learned it. I don't think it's something I learned. I think it's just something over life experience. You know, I mean, maybe as a kid, you know, we all go through the temper tantrum and all that, rah, rah, throwing toys and breaking stuff. And I was a bad kid a little bit when I was little. But as you grow and develop, I, just a little bit, not the whole time, just a little bit. But as I grow and develop, like I say, you start noticing that you're worried and mad about nothing, something you can't control anyway. I don't know when you say you didn't learn it. I mean, you had to at least recognize it because some people, I know people that get mad over the littlest thing, you know, especially if my coffee isn't hot enough. Um, you know, I don't want to wake up or I, I'm not this, I'm not that. I mean, you at least had to be aware of it before you could change it. Yeah, I mean, it just comes with, I mean, I don't know if there was something that just snapped it. I mean, I've had it for a while, but it's gotten better. You know how you work on yourself? Because, you know, yeah. I, I always study under the greats. They say to work harder on yourself than you do on a job. So when you work hard on yourself, you become a better person. And you can provide a better service and a better product to other people. Chris, you're a beast, man. I mean, you are just, you're a beast. I Especially love you. when you think you're going to be an entrepreneur. You know, being an entrepreneur is already hard enough. You know, so you, you got to really be a pleasant person. Like the lady I just met in an appointment, the other day, she was like, you have such a nice attitude. I just, I didn't know what to expect. And when I met you, it just felt like I just want to, you know, do do anything, you know? And I'm like, wow. Wow. Surprise me. But I know that it, it does rub off on other people around you too. It does, Chris, man. It does, dude. The more, it's almost like, it's, I think, but in my opinion, that is the secret. Give the world what you want to see in return, right? That's true. That's true. I mean, you know, if you out here with a negative attitude, you mad at the world, you fighting everybody, and then what you expect gonna come back to you? Same thing you sending out. Wow, man, that is so deep. I always, every time I talk to you, it's like max, max. That's right, that's right. Heavy hidden. All right, let me make sure I got this thing rocking and rolling. Round of family. Uh, give me two seconds. I gotta make sure everything is set here. This technology is challenging. Lord have mercy. Roundup family, thank you for hanging out with me on this post, uh, let me see, Memorial Day special edition of Monday Masters. I had to call it Tuesday Masters, Chris. Yeah, that's one of them things, man. You know, after the holiday, people slow to wake up and slow to think and slow to everything. But it seemed like everybody back in the groove, like nothing ever happened. Yeah, everybody is back. Welcome, Roundup family. Uh, I am Chris Haskins. <clears throat> Your host today on this Monday Masters session, hanging out with Chris Monroe up in, oh, where are you at, Cincinnati? What now? where are you? Well, if you look right here, you'll see Chris Monroe, STL, St. Louis in the Midwest. St. Louis, Missouri, okay. Thank you for hanging out with me today. You know my ministry class is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. In doing that, I want to deliver to you and pour into you some masters that I have met along my short journey on this planet Earth, and Chris Monroe is one of that. Thanks for hanging out with me today, Chris. Oh, it's no problem, because you know I'm all about giving back. I try to give more than I ever can receive. I try to be a big giver. I give a lot of stuff away, you know, and, and it's just, you know, it just helps out a lot of people, and they remember you. You're right, they do. And today you're giving even more. We're going to go over so much stuff. Chris has been so kind 
to give all of my viewers a huge discount on his real estate wholesaling document packet. He's given us a, it's going to be under hundred bucks, Chris. It's going to be Chris. I had to talk him down this conversation earlier today. Thank you, Chris, for sharing with my Roundup family. Thank you. Oh uh, yeah, most definitely. The Roundup family been there from day one, so you know I I, I gotta show love and support automatically, just without question, automatically. So Roundup family, if you want Chris's stuff just for today. Just for today, it's going to be ninety-seven dollars. The links below. You get all of his documents, his real estate. Well, Chris, I'll let you tell him what's in it before we get rock and roll. Then we're going to go get some training on it. Yeah. So basically, it's a resale, uh, a, a wholesale real estate package. Uh, basically, has the questionnaire in there, the questions you want to ask. Because you know, my position in this is to be a professional question asker. I don't go into any deal knowing I'm going to wholesale it, knowing I want to flip it, knowing I want to do this or do that. I go in and ask questions, see what we can do, gather all my information ball it all up and how do get then i can hit them with something but if i don't have the right information i can't even touch it so that's why you know i developed this system to kind of help people with asking the right questions and i do a lot of this virtual a lot of people don't understand so that uh you know i ask all this stuff over the phone i lock up a deal over the phone in a heartbeat in fact i'm about to do one this afternoon after this uh, stream here so it has the the purchase and sales agreement the assignment agreement the joint venture agreement, if you want to work with another wholesaler or a, a, a agent or some partner of some type, something to give you something in writing to tell you that we're going to split this 50, 50, 60, 40, whatever you agree to. Um, it also has a bunch of uh, recorded phone calls to see how I talk and negotiate with people or ask these questions on the phone with people, uh, videos uh, and a whole bunch of other resources. Pretty much everything you need to get a wholesale deal locked up, get it into title and uh, you know make a deal. I was listening to those calls, Chris. I love how I call it the Colombo effect. You know, it's like Colombo, he walks in, he, he, he doesn't know anything. I mean, you literally talk to these people, you know nothing. Yes, that's the best position to go in. And so many people I see make a mistake. They come in and say, oh, I know I'm going to wholesale this, so I'm trying to talk them down on price. Don't worry about the numbers yet. See how you can help them. Because if you can help them and they got room on the price, they're going to give it to you because people deal with people they know, like, and trust. And once they trust you, they like you, and they know you, they'll give you the world. I love it, Chris. Thank you for giving my Roundup family. Go to the link below, Roundup family. Get Chris's stuff. I already got it. He sent it to me. Some powerful stuff, especially with the purchase and sale agreement. That's one of the tools you got to have before you have anything. You can't. You ain't doing nothing without that. Yeah, that's A1 document right there. And this is a, all these documents are one page. One page purchase and sales agreement. So when you hand this to your seller or you send it to them, they don't have to say, let me go get an attorney to review it. It's one document. It's easy. It's, it's stress free. And that's the that's the kind of lifestyle I try to live. Stress free, drama free, easy on everybody. And they just sign and don't ask no questions. Nice. Yes. One page. One page. OK, Chris. So tell me a little bit about your background. How, what gets us here today regarding you being a, a real estate investor slash wholesaler? Well, I'm actually, uh, I'm not even a year in, but I hit the ground kind of running quick. So I closed my first wholesale deal in August of 2018. So what's that, about seven, eight months ago, something like that. I went on to close 15 wholesale deals since then. I've closed the subject two deal. I just recently closed my first uh, seller finance deal with no mortgage or none of that stuff. I'm going to get to that. I want to get to that. I want to get to that, Chris. I want to finance it. And uh, so basically, I, I own several properties now, and, I, and I'm a big advocate of the lease option. I love the lease option. Yes. For my viewers and people in my audience that may not understand why you say that, why do you love le le lease options, Chris? Well, the lease option is the best of all worlds because you don't have to deal with the maintenance, repairs, tenants, toilets, termites, and problems. You basically become the bank, and you're collecting rent every month for your property and uh, you have a lease, but they have an option to buy. They can exercise that option at any time that you give them in a window. And if they decide to not exercise that option, that down payment or that non-refundable consideration that they put in on the front end all goes to Hip Pocket National Bank. So you really can't lose on these deals unless you mess up with your numbers. So in the sense for, uh, let me get, man, so, so many places I want to take this. When we say wholesaling, Chris, are you talking about the... I don't say old. Oh, the, the general speaking, high equity stuff. Or are we talking about no equity, low equity, high equity, all around the board regarding wholesaling? Well, when it comes to wholesaling, a lot of people don't realize you can pretty much wholesale anything. You can wholesale a deal with terms. 
So they, you know, people think that I have to go get this under cash and make a deal and try to beat them up on price and do all of this and fight them and everything. You don't have to do all that. You can give them the deal that they want most of the time if the numbers make sense, if they got good terms. See, I always say that, you know, cash isn't necessarily king in real estate. I think terms is king in real estate. Finance it. Finance it. So, so you're always, telling me wholesaling for you doesn't always mean equity. It does not always mean equity. It just means you work the deal out with the seller. You stayed in the middle somehow and you work the deal with a buyer and you got to eat off that piece of chicken bone. Let's stay here for a minute, Chris, because, um, you know, just when I started in 04, wholesaling was just high equity. There was not, I mean, obviously it existed, but it's gotten more common now. Let me rewind and stay in this framework for my audience that thinks or they might be under the premise that wholesaling is get a property under contract for a low number, flip it, flip it and pull your equity out at that time at closing, which is only one way. Let's stay here for a minute, Chris. Explain this to my viewers exactly where you're at with that. So, yeah, so that's one way that you can actually do it. You can do it one just way. like that cash deal, quick, get your quick money. You can do that same thing except for you're selling a house with financing already attached to it. So say you get a deal locked up, Say you get some type of either subject to type deal or something like that, where you bought a house with existing financing in place, or you have it under contract to buy it like that. And you say, you know what? I don't really want to close on it. I just want to get some money and get on up out of here. You go ahead and you would wholesale that deal over to some end buyer that would love to take a house that's already got financing. Cause I love those houses. If somebody find one like that, bring it on home. I love to take it down, pay some closing costs or something or whatever. So it really just opens up the game to more than just beating people up on cash. So well, are you can't make money so with that? There's nothing wrong with that, but but that's to me. I mean, that is just you know, you know, somebody says, well, that's kind of old. <clears throat> I mean, it's a great way to earn earn money. We are, we're still under the earn column here, which has nothing to do with cash you know, cash flow. But this is under the earn column. You're telling me we can wholesale a subject to Chris? Yes. You can wholesale a subject too. You can pretty much wholesale anything if you have your paperwork right and your documents together. You know, as long as you work out a good deal with that seller, a good deal. I don't even put it to say a great deal. Make a great deal with the seller and sell a good deal to a buyer. How about that? Does that sound like okay. that? So are you telling me, Chris, that we can even wholesale a lease option? Yes. You can wholesale a lease option. You can wholesale any deal you get under contract to purchase. So it's all about working that good deal. And so that's why I come back to knowing how to speak to the seller and, you know, say what you would call those magic words. You want to say the right things to them. You want to make them feel like, you, you know, you're competent. You know what you're talking about. You know, have well, let me ask you, have you found being such a new investor, man, you're only a year in. Have you found that being confident has some attraction when it comes to sellers? Oh, yeah, most definitely, because they're going to have a few questions or a few objections or, you know, what do you think if this happens? You just have to have, you know, some type of basic framework to answer their questions. And it's usually the same stuff is what? Ten questions they're going to ask no matter what, if that many. I had people ask me two questions and I'd be like, that's all. You got any other questions for me? If not, here we go. That's OK. The paperwork. If they don't got no questions. What are we still talking for? I hear you say, OK, the paperwork, Chris. Tell me more about that. Oh, yeah, that's part of those magic words. You don't say, let's sign the contract. We don't use the contract word. I barely try to use the agreement. I mean, that's okay. That's better. But if you just okay the paperwork right here and here, we're good to go. It's just It just seems better. It's not so aggressive like, I need you to sign right now. Sign your life away. You don't want to scare people. People are already scared. You're dealing with real estate, something, but major purchase in their life. So you don't want to scare them any more than they already are afraid. You want to help them get over that hump, sign here, uh, you know, okay, this paperwork right here, move it on to closing, get them there if you got to take them there and do whatever you got to do to get them to the finish line because you know a lot of things can happen between the time you sign it to the time to close. Oh man, goodness, you can say that again, brother. <laughs> you can say that again, brother. My mentor says you got to get them in the boat and so you can start rolling the boat where you need to be. So I need to. Let me just take uh, before I want to I want to talk about this on owner financing, but I want to get the framework. It's already three fifty. I want to get give my audience the framework. Wholesaling doesn't have to be high equity roundup, and I'm here to tell you from I mean this since two thousand four. I've seen it. If you go out there with those goggles on, looking for high equity deals, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. 
That is, you know, as Chris, I'm sure, would say, I'm going to read your mind, the number one, the number one in any business is going to be trouble. Most definitely. You got okay. one extra strategy, you're done. You ain't going to be able to last in this game. So how are we getting paid on wholesaling a subject to Chris? I love it because I think I'm, hopefully we're opening up some people's minds in this one that uh, is under the premise that all we can do is wholesale high equity stuff. Chris, go. Yeah, you can definitely, like I said, wholesale pretty much anything you get under contract. So it's all about working that good deal. You want to work something out with the seller, your negotiation skills, the, the way they like you. They just want to, some people give you their house. You know, I don't want to tell nobody's secret, but I've been given a house before. So, you know, if you're saying the right things, they ready to sign right here and, and just get on down the street. And if you get it under contract for some amount of money, you can assign that to some end buyer that would love to have them go in there and fix it up and do all the stuff they want to do. Or you can just sell it to, like we say, on a lease option to somebody. You have all type of exit strategies you can do. But it all starts with knowing how to work a deal, get that deal locked up for some, you know, a low price or good terms or whatever you work out with that seller. Yeah, I like it. Uh, that's one thing I loved about your, your audio, too, talking to the sellers, the way you were walking in and asking the questions. And to me, the, the questions determine the, which way the conversations are going to go. Exactly, because you want to steer them, even if you know, like somebody asked me earlier today, well, how do you approach somebody in a pre foreclosure? Who said I was going to talk about them being a pre foreclosure? I'm just going to ask them, are you interested in selling your house? Yeah, I want to sell it. Oh, wow. You go through, you ask your other questions. Next thing you know, so what? This sounds like a pretty good house. What made you think about selling this? Well, we're a little bit behind, and my dad died, and my, and my dog, this and that, and they start pouring their heart out to you. So it's more about, you know, like I said, build a rapport, ask some questions. You might know, and I know I've saved several pre foreclosures that I never even mentioned foreclosure to the people. And they were ashamed to say anything because I, you know, I kind of hinted at it. Is the loan, is everything good on the loan on it? You know, everything good with it? They don't say anything about it being late. But if I'm going to buy it and, you know, sell it to buy it or, or lock it up and put it out as a wholesale deal, they don't even care, you know. But I know they was on a pre foreclosure list. They're about to lose that house. Gotcha. Gotcha. So um, real quick, so we're getting on a subject two. We're going to wholesale it. We're getting that the house under contract, and we're controlling the financing, Chris. So is that more? Um, just just give me a snapshot for my audience that might not understand, because we you know subject two is a big hurdle to get over first, and then to say that you're going to wholesale it too. Could you just give me a picture of that? Well, yeah, the biggest thing is you're probably going to be selling it to somebody who understands subject two. If you were to do something like that, somebody who has the infrastructure in place, have their attorneys title company depending on your, your state you know they got to have a paperwork their documents all together so that they can actually execute the transaction properly without problems with do on sale clauses and other things do you help them with that Chris? because i mean i know how i do it i'm in the middle i'm the glue i'm the one setting up i got my buyer i'm like listen i'm giving you this house with the financing come on let's do this slide it all together are you doing that too or are you having them or are you just passing it on so yeah, uh, on a subject two, I probably would stay in the deal, but if I were to uh, assign one, I would help them out in any way I could to help them get to the finish line. Because I yeah. want everybody to eat, you know? The seller got to be happy to solve their problem, the buyer got a property, and I'm gonna give my little money in the middle and get on down the street and let you deal with it. Nice, class, please, please pay attention to this one. This is so big, matter of fact, I've been trying to get, I, I saw one recently, I've been trying to get my buyer to come on with me, Chris, the man's so busy. <laughs> but if you, if you sell one of these, then you don't have to buy it. If you do a sub to you don't have to keep it. You can always, and you can even, what I love about real estate, check this out. Let me work it. I want to finance it. You can buy a sub to I want to finance it out. If you want to at least option it out, you can mix and match these strategies. But Chris, as he is, as he's sharing with us, if you only know that one high equity thing, you're done. Yeah, if you only uh, marketing the pure cash buyers and anybody that's even been dabbling in wholesaling, you know, they're going to beat you up on price a little bit too. You already had to beat up the seller on the price and you're trying to sell it and they're trying to beat you up on the price. Everybody will race to the bottom. I don't want to play that fight. That's a fight. I mean, you know, I'm a win or we going to bang it out, but I don't want to have that fight if I ain't got to. I want to just make my money and get on down the street. You know what's ironic? Hey, Billy. Live broadcast without him. One second. That's Billy. Get him started. So yeah, these deals. I mean, you know, and somebody. Uh, let's see here. They said, "How do you find these subject two type deals?" The biggest thing I would do is for sale by owner. For sale by owner is real important. If let's talk about that, Chris. Stay, go ahead and stay there. Hit it. Go ahead. Yeah, because they're asking basically, what do you do? How do you find these subject two deals? 
A big oh, place yeah. to find them is for sale by owner. Because think about it. If somebody want to sell their house, what are they normally going to do? List it with a real estate agent, right? Yep. There's a reason they decide to for sale by owner or FISBO it or throw it up on their own. They either think they need to do too many repairs or they're ashamed or, you know, a lot of people do a lot of weird things out here. The psychology of a person can go deep. However, just the very instance that you see somebody's doing a for sale by owner, there's usually a reason and an underlying issue. So once you get in and start talking to them, either on the phone or go meet them or whatever you need to do, you start unveiling and saying, oh, wow, you got this mortgage, huh? You're only paying 400 a month. It's principal, interest, taxes, and insurance payment. Wow. And you only owe this much, but, you know, it's not enough equity to wholesale it. It's not enough equity to cash wholesale it, I mean. There's not enough equity in it to list it on a market. You decide that, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and buy this thing subject to and so that's where you will find more of these. You can find them really anywhere, but that's a big hotbed of them with the Fizzbos, the sale by owners. They're all on Zillow, too. I mean, no doubt they're automatically. Here's the thing, Chris. Um, well, Let me ask you, is there a particular way you're looking for one lead? I was talking to Matt, Matt Terrio last week, and, he's, and he was like, listen, I don't really look for one type of lead. I look for the leads that come in and then how I can process them. That's exactly what I do. I try to see what they can, what they have, what they're going to say to me, and I try to give them a solution. Yeah, that's the best way to go. Because when you start going into deals predetermined and pre-programmed, you're hurting yourself a lot of times. And even wow. if you don't know and you come across a seller and they want to sell, but you may not have all the answers, you can partner up with somebody to know how to do these deals. You know, you can either reach out to me or Chris or, you know, somebody in your market, depending on where you are, that knows how to do this stuff. You can JV a subject to deal. You can do all type of stuff. It's so creative. But just knowing that somebody wants to sell their house and you can provide them a solution or you may not be able to. Sometimes you can't do nothing for them. But at least, you know, that wait a minute, they do want to sell. They're highly motivated. Let's see what, how I can work this. Wow. You can work it because great deals are made. Right, Chris? Great deals are made. Yeah. They don't, you got to make them. Man. They'll just come across your desk. That's right. That's right. You got to make them. All right. Let's get to this owner financing thing you just put together, Chris. Can we do a case on that? Yeah, quick case study on that. Found this deal. Guess oh, what it was? Uh, but you call I'm, 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 I'm going to tell my audience, you could, this deal is so sweet. Chris literally calls me like, look, you got to hear about this. <laughs> uh, this is a great deal. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to lie. It's a great, great deal. All right, um, where did it come from? So basically, I was just on my way home, driving down the street. I, see a, little, it was, I see a little sign on the side of the road in front of a house. Not a red and white sign that say for sale by owner, but a sign that said uh, for sale by owner, but it was black and yellow. So I was like, what is this? So I whipped around you U-turn, went back, got his number, gave him a call, figured out his situation, see what's going on. Come to find out the house is free and clear. He owes no mortgage zero mortgage so i said oh wow mm, what do you do with a house like this so i started talking to him seeing what he's thinking you know i check out my numbers and everything um i see that the house is worth probably close to two hundred thousand arv fixed up something like that so uh you know i, I automatically listen to his story and i pitch him straight on well he says he wants one hundred and thirty nine thousand for the house he says he wants 139 so i'm looking like Hmm. I can go try to beat them up on price like everybody else do, but no, no, no. I got other exit strategies. So I go ahead and pitch him on. Well, would you be uh, interested in uh, selling me your house if I could just give you your full price and uh, pay you over time? Would you take your equity in payments and installments? And he basically oh, said, hmm, how does that work? Real quick, let me stay here for a minute, Chris. Why is he selling <clears throat> with no equity? I mean, um, all uh, no mortgage. Well, I believe he had this as a rental property before, but it was uh, vacant at this time. And the only marketing he did was that little sign that I saw. He should have had this thing on the Internet because uh, it's in a hot area, South St. Louis County, Oakville, for those who know parts of St. Louis, nice school district and stuff like that. Three bedroom house, a uh, nice little ranch with a full basement. But it did need a little bit of updating as far as carpet, paint, stuff like that. It needs some repairs. It needed about ten thousand in repairs, something like that. ARV two hundred. He wants one forty, and you walk. You tell Mister Seller, you know what? I'm happy to pay you for one forty. If you can take your equity over time, is that how the conversation kind of went? Yeah, it went something like that. I made him, uh, and this was all over the phone. So I, I never met this guy. We had this thing negotiated all over the phone before I even seen the house 
actually had it locked up before I seen the house or met the seller. Just to throw that in. So how did, you, um, how did you know what repairs were needed to be done? Is that something you were gonna verify when you got there? I'm gonna verify when I trust, but verify. I always do that. So yeah, you know, plus I figured it was a good deal anyway. I mean, this is almost good enough to wholesale, but I don't want to wholesale that thing for cash. I want to stay in the middle and give me some a deal. So basically, uh we agreed to the uh, a $750 a month payment. $750 a month. And so um, that's not going to include the uh, taxes or insurance. So I have to do that on my own, which is no problem. That's an extra 200 bucks. All right, so we're at 950. About 83 bucks on insurance and about uh, about 100 and some on uh, taxes. So that really didn't hurt me. So I just had to do the math and figure about 950. Anything I can get over 950, I'm probably good. That's what are the rents over there? So the rents from what I saw online told me 1100 but guess what your boy got? Oh, you already sold it over the weekend? I already sold it, man. I moved quick. I bought the house on last Tuesday, sold it on Friday. Good Lord. So uh, the rent said about 1100 online, but the position I put myself is, like I said, same way I talk to the seller, that's how I talk to buyers. I ask questions. How much can you put down? How much can you pay a month? Put she down. Said, put down. Wait a minute. We're... We're not renting this. Oh, so yeah, this is going to be on the lease option. I sold it on the lease option. All right, so we're on the lease option. So the exit strategy on this is going to be that lease option. And we and uh, so let's see here. So our lease option sales price was one sixty nine, which is still below that two hundred, and leave somebody room. So it leaves plenty of room on everything. So we got thirty there on the spread. I got a 30k spread waiting on me. And here's the special jewel out of all of this that makes this whole deal worth everything. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't even tell you my rent yet. My oh, rent, okay. I'll, I'll tell you the rent first, but it, there's a special jewel that, that drops in the middle of this that makes this whole deal just blow me away. But uh, I'll get to that in a second. So I rented it out or at least optioned it out. I got a, uh, a tenant buyer to give me 8,000 down, non-refundable. And then they they agreed to pay me twelve hundred and ninety five dollars a month. All right. So that that was a little thirteen hundred. So yeah, thirteen hundred. Yeah, thirteen hundred. Yeah, thirteen hundred bucks. Who's now their, app their application was this thirteen hundred sustainable for them based on the uh, background work that you checked on their income? Yes, because they were already living in a, a townhome paying twelve fifty. So this didn't really hurt them at all. Gotcha. And okay. so um, basically. Okay, so the lease option I got, and, and to throw another little curveball in the middle of that, I had a tenant buyer that was going to give me 15000 on this deal, but the dang on, they ended up getting an attorney and messed up my deal. Can you believe oh, that? What happened? <laughs> yeah, like we say, it ain't over till you get to the close. So I found a tenant buyer. She said, I want it, I want it, I want it. I got 15000 down. I'm like, ooh, wee, let's hurry up and get her in there because I'm getting this house for little or nothing. No money down. And uh, basically for closing costs. So I ended up uh, getting her all the way to the finish line. We get to the day of closing. We go up there and then she starts saying, oh, what about this? What about that? And then, oh, there's another name on the paper on the uh, title. Because I didn't close on it yet. I was going to sell it before I closed it. I was due to close it on Tuesday. But they was in a rush to close it on Monday. So I said, whatever, we'll close it on Monday, no problem. So she, the we go. Buyer. The buyer. The buyer. The tenant buyer. Headache. So little, little little do I know, I'm dealing with a, a headache tenant buyer that I'm glad they didn't buy it. From the beginning, they start off a headache, problem. always a headache. Exactly. If they start out like that, you know, it ain't going to never end. So basically, uh, we get all the way to closing day, 2 o'clock on a Monday to go close this thing, and she gets her attorney involved. And her attorney starts digging and looking. Looking, oh, man, you don't own the property, and oh, what about this, and what about that, and Next thing you know, that's about will you just rent it? And I'm like, you know what? If y'all don't want it, no problem. Niche the deal. And so they done. So they ended up getting watched. But I had had it ready to go until the attorney got into it. And even my attorney looked at it and said, well, he's just doing his job to protect his client. So, you know, whatever. So that fell through. But I already had a backup buyer, as you see here. She did her 8000 down nice. and uh, nice. basically uh, went on and got it. Closed it up on Friday. So you had several applications come in for this one house in that week or these people that you have from previous houses you moved to this one 
So yeah, I had a buyer's list pretty much, but this was a new person that just found me from the signs because signs are always good. Rent to own, no banks needed, arrow sign. Call me up, I was getting called so fast I couldn't even ask them. But you know, that goes straight to voicemail. I got a dedicated line that goes straight to voicemail, gives them an overview of our program. And if you want more information about a particular property, leave your name and number and we'll get right back with you before you know it. I love it, Chris. Now, if I call you for one of these and you actually talk to me, what are you providing me? Why Why is it that I want to do business with you being a, ch a challenged credit person? What is the value that you're offering to the community doing these lease options, my friend? Well, we're going to provide them some home ownership for people who cannot necessarily qualify for a loan at this time. So we're trying to help people get in the homes that, you know, may not qualify right now. Maybe they have a debt to income ratio problem, a credit score problem, or they don't have time on a job problem, whatever the problem. We give them time to go ahead and fix that so they can actually go qualify for a loan. We can get them up in the house pretty quick and close it in a few days. Nice. So um, they're nice. really happy with that. I love it. Wholesaling and stuff. Don't forget Chris's whole real estate wholesaling document packet is in the link below Roundup family. It's only going to be on sale for one day. I convinced the brother to get it on sale. And as a matter of fact, he didn't actually even want to do that. Thank I did you. not want to do it. I did not. But for brother Chris, we're going to do what we got to do, right? Because well, he did so much. <laughs> when you I was giving him to somebody have to give back. It's still, I consider this the after, pre, I mean, the post Memorial Day sale, you know, so. To midnight and, tonight. Huh? <laughs> to midnight tonight. Yeah, it's over. It's done. And I forgot to mention too, Roundup family. I got so many emails this morning from people on the West Coast and my sale ended at midnight Eastern Standard. So I've opened up all my stuff just to midnight tonight too, and I'm done. No more. No more. Wow. See, you're a giver. You're always giving, Chris. That's why you're so blessed. We are blessed, Chris. Everything under 100 bucks. Everything. Okay. Let's get some Q&A. I have to ask you two more things, Chris. Oh, wow. I did forget to tell you what I paid for this house. I thought you paid. You, oh, you got a discount on this? Oh, I paid. I didn't pay all cash. This was the owner finance deal, remember? How much yeah. did I have to bring to closing? Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay, let's get to that. Yeah, go in and closing. $1,240.20. Closing costs. Where is Closing costs, buyer and seller side closing costs is what I paid for this house. Now tell me how you pulled that off and what magical language you use for that. So for that, I basically worked it out with the seller that, uh, you know, we're going to do this $750 a month and we typically pay the closing costs. So you don't have to bring any money to closing. We close everything through a real estate attorney. So everything's legit and disclosed. So we don't have any problems. And, uh, you know, I put them at ease with that and just with them knowing that, you know, we're going to go through a third party and everything's going to be corrected if we have any problems or whatever we have, whatever issues we do, we're going to work it out because the seller was distressed, too, because he had a lot of stuff in his house. So he'd been having estate sales over a couple of weekends, too. I forgot to mention that. So he's been stressed with no mortgage. He ain't going to use the house. Well, it, it, well, he's got stuff. You know, nobody want to have estate sales. He lives two hours away from here. OK, so he's a, a absentee owner. I guess that's a. a that's that would be a, a, a strength or a, a plus we're going to help him out absentee owner he got stuff in the house he don't want to deal with and i don't have no problem dealing with some stuff because every house we get got something in it we got a refrigerator a washer a dryer oh no i'm sorry a refrigerator a dishwasher and an oven we didn't get a washer and dryer okay but uh we got some furniture so you know I, it's all right there um but so basically i worked it out with him to where we would pay those closing costs and he had to bring nothing to closing. And I worked it out to where my first payment of 750 is due on July 1st. So that gave me a little, like a month and a half to find somebody that I like to put in. So when you do these type of deals, you definitely want to put yourself the time in it, you know, 45 to 60 days, if not longer, before you start making that payment. You don't want your back up against the wall where a payment is ready. You might not even have nobody in the house yet. Yeah, tell me about these words that you're using, Chris, regarding to back end. I want to know about the terms because we talked more about the terms on the phone the other day. We didn't get into them here. I thought they was just some magic how you put this together. Um, yeah, basically, I just let them know that we would be willing to pay this $139,000 for the house. Like, we would typically pay the closing costs. You wouldn't have to come out of pocket for anything. We'll take the house as is in its current condition. You don't have to lift a finger. You know, we'll, you don't have to worry about anything. Whatever you want to take, go ahead and take all of that out. 
anything you want to leave, leave it behind and we'll dispose of it properly. We'll get a yeah. dumpster or whatever we need to get rid of any garbage, trash, debris. And we'll take the house as is. So I'm relieving some stress off this seller. He don't have to worry and think about nothing. Just take out the couple of things I want and get on down the street. This is my guy. So he's smiling the whole way and happy. And he got his full purchase price. So as we're working out the deal, um, originally the deal is supposed to be uh, $139,000 with a 10-year balloon, meaning the whole payment is due in full in 10 years. He called me back after two days saying, yeah, well, I'm getting a little older and I think I want to do, you think we can do like five years of a balloon? And I said, well, I mean, that don't sound too bad. How about we do seven years? He said, that's fair. So we agreed to seven-year balloon. And a lot of people are scared to ask that question. Some people would have folded just because that seller called back and said, would you do five years? Oh, I got to do what the seller say. You can negotiate. You know, you just keep a straight face and ask a question back. He asked me, could I do five? I said, well, you know, I understand you do want to get your money sooner. How about we do seven? Is that fair? He agreed. We did a seven-year balloon. Just that little question got me two more years that the average person I see would have let that fall to the wayside. And I don't do that. I always see how we can negotiate, give and take. Give and take. Let me go further with the terms, Chris, because there's a special caveat that we haven't touched yet that you mentioned to me. I want you oh, to yeah. know. The, the golden nugget of the whole deal that makes this all worth getting out of bed to go look at it, to clean it up, to show it to people, put a lot box on it, do all this stuff. It all makes it worth it when I'm doing a principal only payment. That's right. Every dollar that I send him goes directly towards the principal payment of the house. So basically $9,000 per year reduction on that house. Off that $700 a month, 0% interest, no money down, closing costs only. So this was a home run hit. I mean, I could have got a bigger down payment from somebody, but you know, if I get somebody in there that's happy, they, they glad to take it. They know all the problems with the house. I showed them everything. They seen it. They know that they need this and they need that. They happy. Boom. I'm out of here. New, move on, right? Move. I like how you say that. Just move on down the street. Are you under the Are you under the philosophy that uh, medium sized pigs continue to get fed, Chris? Oh yeah, that's what I'm all in the game for right now. My whole strategy right now is to uh, grow my passive cash flow. Right now, it's up to nine hundred and ten dollars on real estate alone. So I'm trying to get that up to about six grand. <laughs> you know, when I get that up there, I'm officially out of the rat race, meaning my passive income has exceeded my monthly expenses, living expenses. So that's the goal right now. Yeah, that passive income. And uh, one thing, what, let me ask you, Chris, no doubt when you first started, you were excited about wholesaling. But as you matriculated, I mean, your whole thinking. Tell me about how your thinking is changing regarding transactions versus cash flow, my friend. Oh, yeah. I don't even care about seeing a cash wholesale deal. They nice. Don't get me wrong. Nice check. If, if it works, it works. But I'd rather get that terms deal where I can stay in the middle and get that passive cash flow while I wait. If they cash me out, good. If they leave, good. I put another person in there. So it's a win-win situation. And I get all the benefits of, like we said, the passive cash flow, the tax benefits, the appreciation, the depreciation, all of the benefits of home ownership, all in my favor. So we can be like Donald Trump paid no tax. Wow, man. You are. <laughs> you are. Chris. When you set it up, where was the seller's mind regarding a down payment, if any at all? Yeah, so I never brought it up. I don't start talking about that. See, like I say, loose lips sink ships. The stuff that comes out of your mouth has a direct reflection on what goes into your bank account. I love it. So I definitely don't try to go in there over talking it and I can give you five thousand dollars and I can give you ten thousand. I ain't offering all that. We'll buy your house. He never said nothing about interest. He never said nothing about a down payment. I told him what we can do if he wanted a down payment, if he wanted some skin in the game, I was more than happy to put something in his pocket, but he didn't ask for it. So I didn't offer it. So that's the biggest thing. Like people do that even with wholesaling as well as cash deals. They go in like, yeah, we can close your house in seven to 10 days. The seller didn't ask you to do that. Why are you trying to jump to close a house quick? But they didn't ask you for that. You have to listen to see what you can do to help them. So I, even with a wholesale deal, I'll give an example. If I was going to cash wholesale this. I would ask him. So uh, we agreed on the price. Everything looks good here. If we're able to close in the next 30 to 45 days or sooner, is that okay with you? They say yes, 45 days. Boom, I lock it up 45 days out. They just gave me permission instead of going into the deal thinking that, oh, I got to do 10 days and seven days and I got to close quick. They didn't ask for a quick close. Mm -hmm. A quick close to the average person is like 30 days. You know, so we get it closed 
within the next 30 to 45 days or sooner you can close it in 10 days it don't matter but you want to get yourself as much time as possible if you're going to wholesale a deal nice nice i love it anything else we got to cover on this before we go to our q and a chris uh pretty much i think we covered most of it like i say it's, it's all about saying the right magic words to them sellers you know when you just say the right thing and they just melt in your hand like you can solve all my problems once i identify the problem solve all their problems they'll give you the world identify the problem that is so crucial chris i want to stay here for a second how are we going to identify that problem chris in your mind well, I mean, the only way I know is to ask questions. I have, ask a, questions. I have a philosophy. Ask questions. I don't make an offer on any property until I ask about 50 questions. I got 50 questions for you. It ain't going to come out as like I'm just drilling you with questions. It's going to be conversational. It's going to be like, oh, wow, yeah, this is a good house. Oh, you play football. You know, you want to become friends with the seller. You know, build some rapport. Oh, you graduated from this school. Oh, my auntie went there or whatever. You want to build rapport, talk to them like a human, and, you know, and go over it. You know, and that's the biggest thing. And that's why I was getting at asking questions, asking questions. When I started, I, know I was nothing. so scared. Yeah, I know nothing. I just go into the deal. Hey, yeah. So first of all, you're interested in selling your house. You're interested. Great. So would you tell me a little bit about it? How many bedrooms? How many baths? You go through that basic stuff about the house and then you start going over other things. You know, like I said, I got a whole questionnaire. That's what comes in that package there. Everything you need to ask somebody to get get the information you need to make an educated offer. Yes, Roundup family, thank you for hanging out with us today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button and comment. Comment, what do you do when you go to the seller's house? I like to know what kind of deals are you looking for? Let's do some Q&A, Chris. Q&A, that's my favorite. I love questions because that's what gets us to the finish line. Yes, sir. And for yes. those who don't know why you're looking at those questions, if you haven't joined the new Woke Real Estate Investors Group on Facebook, it's a free group. We talk about this type of stuff all the time. Chris is in there contributing when he can. Everybody's there. It's just a nice online community. So, you know, if you pop up and run into a deal, you got a question. Woke Real Estate Investors. Uh, it's a nice group on Facebook. That's right. That is a good one. And you grew that thing pretty fast, Chris. I saw you at 500 people. In a few, I mean, about a month and a half or something. Yeah, we've been moving fast. But it's not a place to go in there just like, oh, I'm looking for a buyer and all that. It's not a place to post deals. It's a place to learn and network with other people and things like that. But if you know somebody's in the same market you're in and hey, yeah, you know, yeah. we can partner up. You know, we just want to, you know, build community because everything's about your community. Teamwork makes the dream work. It is. It is. Make sure you round a family, get Chris's stuff. I promise you it's going to be worth the hundred bucks. I mean, I've already. Chris, uh, you, you leave. A cost is asking when you were first starting out, is there anything else you can do with the leads that aren't wholesale, but don't require any cash or credit? I guess you don't have any, any money. Um, it just depends. Like I say, it's all about what, how can you solve their problem? First, you have to identify the problem. Then you have to come up with some solutions. You are the problem solver. You are the expert in the room, but that doesn't mean you go in there and running off at the mouth, tell them everything you can do without seeing what they got for you first. So that's why we always position ourselves as a question asker. So, yeah, so uh, like I said, this looks like a pretty good house. What made you decide to sell it? First question, why you want to sell it? I love that one. So, if you, I mean, if you know, and I and I try to ask that later on. I try to, uh, you know, I try to ask more so about the house when I'm talking to people over the phone. So, you know, because that's what they want to tell you about. So, yeah, tell me about this house. Is there any repairs or anything that you're aware of? An open question and let them rattle off all oh, the bathroom, this, the plumbing, the woom, woom, woom. Let them rattle off all that stuff. Because yeah. I want to know, you know, what their mindset is, because I'm going to close them on everything they told me. Everything they told me, those 50 questions, I'm going to close them on later because I'm going to say, oh, yeah. Have you thought about listening with the real estate agent? Oh, no, I don't want to do a real estate agent because they're going to charge me a fee and it's going to be this and it's going to. Oh, great. So I've already eliminated that. That, that. that objection won't come back up again because I've already got that answer before I ever made an offer. So that's why I hold off on the offer. A lot of people are so quick to make an offer. Slow down, get your education up, get your information up first, and then present intelligent offers. Nice. I love it, Chris. You know what's weird? I just think we all, we're starting out or in anything in life, we want to just rush to the finish line. You know, I think it's instinct. Yeah, I, I rush to lock them up. I do that. But other than that, everything else slow. <laughs> it's backwards, right? I'm talking about when you meet with the seller, you can't. You, you, you just can't, you know, it's like it's like going on a date. You can't go to the girl and try to, you know, you just got to. Yeah, that's one of the questions on the questionnaire here. So if we're able to agree on everything, how soon would you like to close? How I need soon to would you like to close? Say, how soon would you like to close? 
So, you know, I get their minds. Some people are like, oh, it don't matter. I'm open. Oh, man, I need to close within two weeks. Well, I'm trying to get out of town or whatever their issue is. I don't want to know how they're thinking because everybody think different. You can't read somebody's mind, but you can ask questions and then get feedback and say, oh, you one of them type. I see how we got to handle you or a mean seller. I like mean sellers more. Some people run away from mean ones, but I like mean ones because nobody can't steal it. Nobody else ain't going to deal with it. I like it when they mean. Because I know I can knock them down. Chris, uh, oh, Daniel, thank you for your love, Aubrey. Thank you, brother Daniel. Yuli Cost wants to know, how do you take pictures of the properties if you're doing virtual wholesaling, Chris? So there's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, one way, I end up going to doing it myself. That's always the, the one option. A second way, you can have the seller take a couple pictures. Just tell them, take me a couple pictures of it. Uh, that's another way. Or if it's a vacant property, you can go take, you know, have a, a real estate agent or somebody in your market or another wholesaler or somebody. You can pay somebody to go take pictures for you. There's a website. It's uh, called We Go Look. They do that. I think it costs a little money to sign up with them. We Go Look. They can have. They can go take pictures for you for a property. That's a, that's a site that you could use. I don't use them, but I've seen other people use them that do virtual wholesaling and virtual deals. Um, agents can go. But I'd rather just have an agent or somebody in your market. You know, get somebody on your team, somebody you're working with, a partner, you yourself. I mean, I take the best pictures, you know, I think, but, you know, I'd rather let somebody else do it. But uh, that's only on when I'm getting ready to sell it. I'm going to need those pictures. before, But I lock it up sight unseen many times. Nellie Nell Rockwell, what's the best way to take a subject to on my personal name in a trust or in a personal name or in a personal house? Oh, hold on. Let me. What's the best way to take a subject to in my personal name or in my personal name in a trust or an LLC? Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Well, there's a lot of ways you can do it. And some people do it a lot of different ways. But I was always taught to put it in a trust, which is always better because uh, just by law, they cannot basically call that loan due. If you if a seller has a property in their private name and it transfers to a trust, they de they basically cannot call the loan due. And uh, that's one thing that can happen. They can call a loan due. And another thing, they can charge you a fee for transferring their name. Some banks will charge you a fee, 1% or whatever they got in their fine print on the loan documents you signed off. So I basically wow. just put in a trust and don't do all that. I don't have you, seen, it. have you seen that, Chris? You had any problems with uh, banks with stuff too? I have had zero problems at this point. You know, I, I haven't done enough deals to see it, but uh, the, the ones I've done has been no problem. As long as I get that uh, bank authorization to release information, you know, I can talk to the bank. And then I get that uh, also that limited power of attorney that uh, basically I basically am the representative for the house. So I have to talk to the bank, do whatever I want to with the house because I got power of attorney when you're doing a sub too. I love it, Chris. You have been in the business for a lot of year, but I feel like you've tapped into some giants in this industry. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I only study from the greats. So that's that's one of the secrets. Get around some people that, you know, know what they're doing. Go deep on the information. I watch all of Chris Haskins videos, all of them. How many you got? 250? No, we got almost 550 now, brother. Oh, my gosh. I watched it back when it was probably close to 300 or something. I don't yeah. know. I went through all of them. You know, I, I study and, you know, I, I learn, you know, nice. I learn all I can because the more, you know, that's going to help you elevate in your market. So a lot of people stuck on just wholesaling or stuck on just being a real estate agent or stuck on just whatever that when you become a problem solver, you can take more deals than most people can never even see. Can I think that goes to in, any bit. I think that goes to being an entrepreneur, Chris. Yeah, I mean, definitely. You have to have a vision. And so that's what kind of helped me, too, because I work kind of in the resale business. I have a resale shop here in St. Louis where we actually sell furniture, collectibles, antiques, all type of stuff. So I buy this stuff at an auction, so I buy some for $20, sell it for $120. And look at that big old marker. So I already was flipping stuff. So flipping wholesale deals and flipping paper, that was so much easier for me because I already knew how to sell. Yeah. Sydney Davis wants to know, can you supply a deed when doing a subject to do, uh, deal? Is there a deed you can give her? A deed? Uh, when you buy the house, yeah, you're going to get the deed. You buy the house on the subject to the loan will stay in the seller's name, but you own the house. You separated the loan from the house. Just like the bank goes to sell off these loans and these mortgages real quick. You can buy the house just like they selling that off. Same thing, but they don't like when you do it, but they can do it about seven times. Welcome to America. You can, I can do it, but you can't. Exactly. Well, Sydney, I think she wants a deed. The reason I don't supply deeds, I might give you the warrant, general. No, 
deed to trustee because they're changing in every state, Sydney. I don't know what state. You got 50 different deeds. Yeah, get that from your title company or your uh, attorney in your local area. That's yes. always the best resort. Even with the documents you do, always let them review and make sure they're good. They might need to add something or some, you know, because every state is different. You get up in New York and California, these certain states, they got funky rules. You'd be like, what the heck? Hey, we ain't got all that down here. We good to go, buddy. Oh, Daniel here. A few more that were cut out of here, Daniel. Daniel wants to know, so you got, you can buy a, uh, was this, did you get the one we're talking about on a sub two and turn it into a lease option? Or that was, that was owner financing, right? So this one was a pure 100% owner financing, no money down deal. Gotcha. All right. Only reason I had to bring some money to close it was because of closing costs. And if I'd have closed it with that other tenant buyer the day before, I would have brought zero dollars. I would have did everything free. Tell me about the instruments you used to record on closing that owner financing, Chris. <clears throat> so yeah, basically uh, my title company, they, they basically drafted up a note and uh, basically writing out all the terms. So when you fill out a purchase and sales agreement on the front end, that's the thing that a lot of people mix up with the paperwork. You fill out that document, purchase and sales agreement. This is what me and the seller agreed to do. And you send that over to your attorney or your title company, and they draw up all the legal documents to do the stuff that you wanna do. You don't worry about that. You just put down what your intentions are on your purchase and sales agreement. This is what the buyer and the seller agreed to, and you let the professionals do what they do best. Nice. Professional do what they do best. You know, as you get older, you learn people can do things better than you, right? Yeah, in a heartbeat. I'm all about outsourcing and let somebody else do it. Oh, my brother's here. Hey, Ronnie. I love you, my brother. How you doing? Big bro Ronnie in the building. Oh, I wanted to stay there, Chris. I have some special language in my deed of trust and my, my notes. Just because we like to move debt around, say, for instance, but I'm, I don't want to get into it now, but sometimes we move debt. So some of the language is in there. Oh yeah, to say it's assignable that it could be sold or there you go, yeah, sign it or yeah, that's in line. yeah, they put that in there. Okay, okay. Well you got a you got a good title company. Say for instance, if you wanted to uh cash out in the next few months, you could be take that because you still have a note. You could take that note, put it on another house. Who gets the money? Right. You get the money. That's a uh, that's called a substitution of collateral, man. That is just a, that you talking about a, a, a term that would change your life. Selling a oh. house, you getting the money, putting a note on another house, and keeping on down the street. Wow. Now, that's some creative stuff there. And so that's another thing. That's another exit strategy I'm planning for this house, right? So this owner finance deal we're working on. So say yeah, three years go by, right? And this tenant buyer has stayed and did whatever, and they have not paid it off or have not went and qualified for a loan. This mortgage has been paid down, like I said, about $9,000 per year. So uh, say I owe this guy about 100000 now. We done paid it down three three years or so in. We got it down to 100000 I can call up the seller and say, you know what, Mr. Seller, um, I see I owe you about 100000 here, and I came into a little bit of money. I want to know, would you consider taking 70000 for the pay this off in pool? They call that the deal after the deal. I'm going to get another $30,000 or $40,000 discount later on if I can. Chris, you too much, man. All right, we've been here for an hour. Chris, final thoughts on somebody. I love it because we talked about this wholesaling, not the traditional or generally speaking. Every um, Generally speaking, people think that you just get a house under contract, low, sell it for high. Then we yeah. talked about owner financing. Final thoughts, my brother Chris, on people that want to get into, get, get their next wholesale deal or order financing deal. Hit it. My final thoughts is get deep in the education and deep in the taking action. You're not going to know all this stuff overnight. It's impossible to know every little intricate detail of all of this stuff. You're going to make some mistakes. Don't worry about that. You just do the things that you know you're supposed to do from the information that you receive and you'll be okay. Uh, that's why, like I said, I created that woke real estate investors group just to help people grow and learn and network and, you know, ask questions because, you know, stuff come up all the time. You're going to have a question. And somebody may be able to answer. Maybe I can answer. Maybe Chris can answer. Somebody can answer it to help you get on down the road versus, you know, let me go have an attorney look at it, even though you should have an attorney review your paperwork. But some people be jumping to go pay a thousand dollars to have somebody look at a document when it was like, you could have did something easier than that, man. You waste the money now. Slow down. <laughs> so my biggest thing is, like I say, get good at asking questions. 
that uh, the Chris Monroe Wholesale Real Estate Package is on sale today. Go ahead and hit that link in the bio for the discount. What was it, 99 bucks? You got it on there now? So it's 99. a discount. Yeah, one of the two. Everything you need to do a cash wholesale deal, purchase and sales agreement, uh, assignment agreement. And another thing, my assignment agreement is written so that basically uh, you don't tell what you made. So I'm selling the contract for a price versus my assignment fee is X. I don't have it wrote like that. I haven't wrote that my contract is for sale for this much so that I don't have any problems with a buyer. Even though I haven't had any problems, it just makes everybody on the up and up. Uh, it also comes with the uh, joint venture agreement so you can work with somebody else in your market if you need to or out of your market to agree all of that stuff and a bunch of other paperwork all outlined, real simple stuff, one page documents, make it easy, it's self-explanatory and it has the recorded phone calls in there to teach you how to speak to sellers, how to ask the questions, how to dig and re-ask the question. Because sometimes, you know, you can ask somebody how much you want for your house. Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And they give you some more janky answer like that, right? You can say, all right, well, no problem. You're going to ask some more stuff. Uh, what about this? What about that? What about this? You come back. Oh, wow. So if you could sell it for cash, what would you take for your house? You might have to answer the second way another way. And then next thing you know, they come on and tell you the answer. So that's all the stuff that, you know, I kind of go over in this uh package here to try to help you ask the questions in the right way because once you become a professional question asker everything just opens up wow you're right dude i love it i was scared to death chris is it okay or will someone try to kill you if you make a mistake out there talking to sellers no they will not <laughs> you're gonna make mistakes you know i made plenty of mistakes doing this but like i say i don't I don't worry about that. I just learn, get up, go again. Learn, get up, go again. And there's some things you can't even control, like title issues. I left over forty thousand dollars in wholesale fees in 2018, all because of title issues. Not my fault. Had a buyer, everything lined up, can close because of title issues. But that's just part of the game. So that's why you want to keep that pipeline full, keep your marketing up, and keep your education up, and start talking to more people. The more people you talk to, the more people you help, the more money you'll start making. So um, basically what I'm hearing you, this could be close to a no Are you saying this real estate is like a numbers game? Oh, yeah, it's most definitely a numbers game. You can't talk to three people and think you're going to find a deal. You might have to talk to 100 people. You might have to talk to however many to even find somebody that even want to sell if you're cold calling, because that's a whole other beast in itself. You might have to talk to a thousand people cold calling or whatever you're doing, different yeah. strategies and things like that. And wow. so... Um, and I actually break down all the different marketing strategies that I do on WokeRealEstate.com. That's a website I developed as well to break down other things and stuff just to help people. They might say, how do you do the text messaging? How do you do the ringless voicemail? How do you do this? All that stuff on WokeRealEstate.com. I made it real easy for everybody to just check it out. Wow, Chris. Thank you so much for, for being a servant, my friend. It's the name of the game. Be a servant. Serve. How many people can you serve today? Be like McDonald's served over one billion people. Wow, Chris. How old are you, by the way? Well, I'm a young man. I'm closer to 35 than I am to 40. How in the world did you learn this servant thing? Because I just learned it two years ago to be a servant. I didn't even know that was. How are you getting all this data? So like I said, I've been working harder on myself than I do on any job. See, I got about 14 streams of income. Like I sell a lot of stuff on eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, OfferUp, LetGo. You name it, I got a presence there. Sell a lot of stuff. I have over 10,000 items for sale. So adding real estate to the to the thing, just like, oh, wow, look at these bigger checks and these bigger deals. It's the same stuff. Once you work on yourself hard, learn how to communicate, learn how to close and you know negotiate and all this other stuff and get good at it, your, your bank account will just start growing automatically. So it sounds like you you're in a business. I mean, you're almost you're an entrepreneur, and just real estate is another leg of income for you. Yes, most definitely. This is the one that's gonna get me out the rat race. Hopefully this year. Wow, that is so cool. I'm just honored to be a part of it, Chris. I'm honored, man. <clears throat> and yes, I thank you because you know I learned a lot from you watching your videos. I watch you know all, all the stuff online. You know. Uh, like I say, and the only thing I do different than most people, I do a lot of virtual. That's my biggest thing. I don't go meet a lot of people. Like I said, out of them 15 wholesale deals, I only met three sellers. I don't even meet all them people. Lock them up. I'm about to lock up one as soon as we finish this stream. A subject two deal. You don't want the house, so I'm going to take it over for him. Roundup fam, it's been an hour. I got to keep moving. God bless you. Make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to go to Chris's Facebook pages and the link below. I promise you, you won't see anything like this. Why? Because Chris and I both enjoy pouring into you. I promise you, the more you pour, the more you serve, the more you're blessed.
most definitely that's right hit that link in the bio and give it a thumbs up follow me on all social media outlets at chris monroe stl that's snapchat that's twitter that's instagram that's facebook anywhere you want to be at chris monroe stl and for links for all my other stuff is at chris monroe stl.com as you know i do a lot of stuff so <laughs> yeah, you do wow Roundup family, thank you for joining us. And I opened up my sale one more day. I'm going to run into the end to midnight tonight, too. All you guys sending me those emails. You were 20 minutes late, 30 minutes late. I'm sorry. So I opened it up for the day, today only. It will be gone after the day. Okay. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. God bless you. Peace. Peace.